Hello. In this series of videos, we're going to talk about comparators, oscillators, and waveform generators. We're going to start with comparators. Um, a comparator is a device that is similar in structure to an op-amp in that it has uh, two input signals, a positive input signal and a negative input signal, or a non-inverting and inverting input signal, um, and it has an output signal. One of the key differences with respect to the op-amp is that a comparator is meant to be operated as a nonlinear device, meaning um, it compares the two input voltages and it will output uh, a binary signal, either a high or a low signal, depending on whether the positive input terminal is at a higher voltage than the negative input terminal or vice versa. So essentially, mathematically, we could write that V out is equal to, um, I'm going to call it V high. If the positive input terminal is at a higher voltage than the negative input terminal, and V low, if the positive input terminal is at a lower voltage than the negative input terminal. And this is in sharp contrast to uh, a regular op amp, which is meant to be operated in the linear region. Um, if we wanted to represent graphically the ideal operation uh, of a comparator, we could represent the input signal as a differential input signal, uh, V plus minus V minus, that will be our differential input signal, and the output signal, and the idea again is that the output signal will be uh, sitting at a high voltage, and we will define what high voltage may mean for uh, positive differential input signals and at a low voltage for negative differential input signals. I notice that in the case of an ideal comparator, uh, that transition is instantaneous. Um, and that's, again, in contrast with an op-amp where we have a linear region uh, where the output signal is proportional to the differential input signal and we typically connect it using negative feedback in order to ensure a, a larger transition region. In the case of a comparator, it's the opposite. We want that transition to be as sharp as possible. Uh, typically, the comparator is uh, represented with the same symbol as an amplifier, just that triangular symbol with the differential input and the, and the output. Uh, but normally, you will see this little symbol indicating the comparator, and sometimes you will even see it with a threshold uh, cross through the middle. And that's just to indicate that this is a, a comparator as opposed to an op-amp. Uh, typical applications of comparators, since they're comparing two input signals, um, sometimes you will have one of those signals be a reference signal, and then uh, the other signal be the actual input signal, and they're going to be used uh, for event detection to see whenever that input signal crosses uh, that particular uh, threshold of that reference signal. Uh, because of their binary output, they are going to be used in digital analog to digital conversion or data conversion applications. They also can be used for um, waveform shaping, converting a sine wave into a square wave or generating a clock wave, a clock, a uh, square clock from a uh, sinusoidal waveform, uh, etc. There are other applications for oscillators, as we shall see uh, very soon, etc. Um, it's worth mentioning that even though they're similar in structure to an op-amp, they're not equivalent to an op-amp. And even though, as we shall see, we can use uh, op-amps as comparator circuits uh, by simply running them in open loop between the positive and negative saturation regions, uh, we shall see that you know those are going to be uh, low-performing or average-performing uh, comparators, so not very good comparators, and then the reverse is not going to be true, meaning if you pick a, a comparator IC, you're not going to be able typically to use it as an op-amp, uh, because when you have a dedicated comparator IC, uh, there are some differences in the way it's been designed. Uh, it may have been designed with an open collector, uh, which means a nonlinear output, um, and, and some other differences, typically they're uncompensated to provide higher speeds, uh, they're meant to be high-gain circuits, even though that's also true for op-amps. But again, as even though we can use an op-amp as a comparator, typically the opposite is not going to be true. We're not going to be able to pick a comparator and use it as an op-amp. Um, 
In terms of a classification of comparators out there, uh, there are different ways that comparators can be classified. Uh, we have, for example, inverting versus non-inverting comparators, uh, which is obviously means you know they will provide a high or low output signal based on whether uh, the positive input terminal is higher than the negative or the opposite. In the case of a non-inverting comparator, um, a higher positive input voltage is going to provide a high output. In an inverting comparator, a higher positive input terminal is going to provide a low output. Uh, there are also saturating versus non-saturating comparators. Uh, and that's in the context, for example, of an op-amp. We can see whether um, we are running the op-amp between the positive and negative saturation regions or whether we are clipping that output to prevent that op-amp from saturating. In terms of a structure, we are going to see that there are open collector comparators versus um, active collector comparators, for example. Uh, based on the, the output stage, and they are connected differently. Uh, but one of the typical uh, and, and perhaps most uh, key classifications is the connection of the comparators, whether they are connected in open loop, um, and they're called open loop comparators, meaning there is no feedback path from the output to any of the inputs, or whether they um, are connected using positive feedback uh, positive feedback comparators, which, as we shall see, are also known as Schmidt triggers. And so one of the possible classifications, again, not the only one, uh, is whether they are connected with no feedback, in which case they're called open loop comparators, or positive feedback. In which case they're referred to as Schmidt triggers. Um, and so in what follows, we are going to uh, start looking at initially uh, open loop comparators or no feedback comparators, and then we're going to move on to Schmidt triggers and see what their advantages are over the open loop comparators. Um, as we start with the open loop comparators, uh, initially we are going to start looking at uh, the operation of comparators as being similar to that of an op-amp or how an op-amp in open loop will operate as a comparator. And then we're going to transition into looking at the particular structure and functions of a comparator that are not shared with an op-amp. But we're going to start with the op-amp and then transition uh, to see what are the, the characteristics that make comparators different from op-amps.